Hey everyone, welcome back to Fred's Garage. Thanks for coming. So on today's episode, we have some LED lights in the back of our Bronco that we would like to hook up to our accessory switches, okay? So we want to try to make it as easy and as straightforward as possible. We're going to use the Bronco's accessory switches that are on the overhead console inside the vehicle. We're going to connect it right here at the junction box. I'll show you which wires are what and where they go. Then we're going to have to connect it at the glove box, and then we're going to have to connect it at the rear quarter panel, and then out the back to the LED lights. The goal of this video is to make it as straightforward and as simple as possible, okay? So stick around, and let's get that done. We'll be right back. All right, everyone, so here's the six accessory switches. Certain trims of Broncos, the switches were standard. My, my Bronco is a base, but I added the switches when I ordered the Bronco. And you'll see there's one through six. And the switches aren't spring-loaded. They will not come back. You will have to turn them on, turn them off. Switch one is a 30 amp, okay? What that means is it has a bigger wire and it has more amperage to the switch. This switch here we should be dedicated to something that's uses a lot of amperage something like a mini fridge something like a big row of led lights over your windshield you want to kind of save that one for something that needs a lot of amperage accessory switch two is a 15 amp switch it's not as powerful as the 30 amp accessory switch one but it's still much more powerful than three four five and six okay so you would like to think about accessory switch two for something else that needs a lot of load a lot of electrical load that would you need a 15 amp fuse okay and then we have switches three four five and six three four five and six are 10 amp fuses these are good for basically everything you really need that will not overload the circuit okay now what my goal is in my bronco and everybody's different is i want to use it from one to six with one being the front of the bronco and work my way around to six being the rear of the bronco so in today's video, since we want to connect the LED lights that came, in my, came with my bumper in the back of the Bronco, we're going to use accessory switch 6, okay? So that is just the way I like to wire it. You can wire it any way you want. It's just easy for me to remember, front to back, and we'll go from there. So now that we got this out of the way, let's move to under the hood, and let me show you the wires, and we'll talk about that. All right, so before we pop the hood, let's talk about a few things. One, some people out there might not feel comfortable with automotive wiring and wiring in, in general. So I have this video right here, which will be linked in the description. It's a 20-minute video to help you learn how to wire everything you need to wire in your vehicle. So it gives you a little bit more confidence. Second off, let's talk about the tools and the stuff that we need to get this project done. Everything you see in this video will be in the description box below. So feel free to go down there and link to that and, um, cool. and make your wiring as successful as possible. Here's a picture of what we're going to need for the tools. I'll leave this picture up here while we talk about the tools that we're going to need. So the first thing we're going to need is some sort of crimping pliers, okay? I like to use these dedicated crimpers. You can also get a pair of strippers and crimpers, and you're going to need a pair of wire strippers. So if you only want to get one pair, you can do this. This is the wire stripper part. Here is the crimper part, okay? In my case, I'm going to use a pair of snips because it's just easier to cut the ends off of the wires that Ford has um, wired for us. We're going to need to use some way of connecting the wires. In my case, I'm going to use a butt connector. The butt connector is what we're going to use with this crimping tool to connect the wires to each other, okay? When I connect wires on the outside of the vehicle, or underneath the hood, I'm going to use what is known as wire heat shrink. This wire heat shrink is going to go over the wire in the buck connector, and then it's going to be heated, and it's going to constrict around the wire to make it as water-resistant as possible to connect it. <clears throat> to shrink this heat shrink, I used to use my trusty torch, which works great, but in tight areas is a little bit hairy. 
So I'm going to use this dedicated heat shrink wire heater. It's about 10, 15 bucks. I do a lot of wiring, so for me it comes in handy. But you don't need to purchase one of these. You can just use this type of lighter or even a Bic lighter. Just be careful around other material in the area of the wire, okay? And like I said, I'm only going to use the heat shrink on the outside or under the hood. I don't need it in the glove box, and I don't need it in the rear quarter. I'm just going to use the buck connector, okay? One more thing I'm going to use, I'm going to use these here. These are water-resistant plugs, okay? And the reason I'm going to use these here is because today's episode, I want to use number six to wire my rear lights. And in the future, say I wanted to switch that up. Say I wanted to use switch four or switch two. All I have to do is unhook this, and then I can switch it. I like to use this section coming from the switches. So every wire that comes from the switches, all six of them will have this connector. And I will use this connector going to my accessory. So I can have I can have plug six go to the rear LED lights. Or in the future, if I want to use plug six for rock lights, I can do that. If I want to use plug one for my LED lights, I can do that. But then if I decide to that I'd rather have plug one go to my refrigerator in the back of the truck, I can just unplug it and move it. So I don't have to deal with cutting wires that are already short and add new butt connectors if I ever want to change it. It's nice and easy, just like so, okay? So I hope that helped a little bit. Let's pop the hood and let's see how the wires go from there. All right, so here are the six accessory switches wires under the hood, okay? And we're going to start, switch number one is going to start from the left to the right to switch number six, okay? So switch number one is the yellow 30 amp. Switch number two is the green and the brown 15 amp. Then you have what they call violet and green. I would call it purple and green. But that's switch number three. Switch number four is the brown one, which is a 10 amp. Then we have switch number five, which is blue and orange. And then we have switch number six, which is yellow and orange. Okay. What you want to focus on is switch number one. You notice the wire of switch number one and switch number two are much larger than the other four. The reason for that is switch number one is 30 amps and switch number two is 15 amps. So because they have higher amperage, they need larger wires. So when you connect to these two switches, you want to connect with the appropriate wire for the amperage that you need. And the other four are the same size wires, okay? Now let's look at the wires that feed into the Bronco. Okay, so here are the three wires that feed into the Bronco. You have the purple. We'll talk about that one first. The purple goes up to the top of your radiator, to the front of your Bronco. This is the wire that you would hook up to to bring lights or whatever to the grill or the front area of your Bronco. If you want to get power to the inside of your vehicle, you can use either the brown with the white stripe or the white. They both will end up in the glove box and then you can go from there. All right, so my ultimate goal in this video is to get power to the rear of the Bronco. So I want to use my accessory switch number six, which is the yellow with the orange stripe. And I want to connect it to the brown wire with the white stripe to get the power to the glove box. We're going to connect it right here. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is strip up the wire back about a quarter inch on both wires. And then we're going to add our buck connector. And then we're going to add some heat shrink. And then we're going to add one end of the water-resistant connector. And then we're going to bring up the heat shrink, bring it over the buck connector. And we're going to heat it up and get it all nice and water-resistant. And then we're going to go on the other side of the water resistant plug and we're gonna crimp that on do the same thing with the heat shrink and then we'll be all done and we'll have a nice water resistant connection then you want to come over here and open your glove box and remove whatever you have inside your glove box 
Now I'm going to bring you in closer and show you exactly how to do it. You're going to come to the side and you're going to locate this pin right here. And all you have to do is put your finger underneath and pop it up. And once you pop it up, she'll pop right out. Okay? So let me show you that again. You're going to put your finger underneath, pop it up, and then she'll pop right out. Set her aside. And then right up here, you're going to see this little tab right here. There's one on either side. You're just going to push them in, and your glove box will fall to the ground. Okay? Push them in. Glove box will fall to the ground. Let's head inside and I'll show you what Okay, it looks. so let's take a look inside the glove box. This orange wire is your antenna wire. If you look next to the antenna wire in my case, I have the brown and white wire, which is the one we connected under the hood. And we have the white wire that comes from under the hood. And then right over here, we have the gray with the orange stripe, which will go to the top, well, which will go to the passenger side visor. Gray with orange stripe, passenger side visor. And way in the corner there is the white with the orange stripe that's going to go to the right rear quarter panel. And that's what we want to connect. We want to connect our brown and white wire to the white with the orange to make it to the rear quarter with a buck connected. I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like after completed. All right. So once we've completed that task, all you have to do is put your glove box back on. Okay. Now we're going to move to the right rear quarter panel and connect the wiring there. All right, so I'm going to use my wedge tool, put it right in here, and we're going to pop out this little panel. Pop out that little panel. That'll give us access to the wire. And it'll give us access to the back. Okay, so now that we have that off, we can come over here and we can start pulling this panel out very gently from the rear quarter. And she'll pop right off. There you go. That's all we need to do to expose that wire that's right there. We're going to place something in here to wedge this open. So we can work in there. Okay, okay, once we get the front off, we're going to go in the back and we're going to pull it up nice and gently from the back too. We want to have an access all the way to the back. Our goal is to place this 18 gauge wire, connect this to the Ford accessory wire that Ford has left us here. In my case, I'm placing a plug in case I ever want to change it. And then we're going to feed it through to the outside and feed it to the outside lights, okay? So let me bring you in here and let, let you see this accessory wire and how we're going to hook that to this buck connector. Okay, so I've wedged it out. What's a better thing to wedge it out then than your spotlight, which you're gonna need anyways. And if you look in there, there's the wire right here. Okay, so we're gonna use this wire that came from the glove box. We're gonna wire it to our new wire and feed our new wire out the back, okay? Using a buck connector right here. Let me do that and then I'll show you when it's done. All right, I hope you can see my buck connector down there. I wire tied it to the original harness and I followed the red wire all the way back and the plug is in the back there. Okay, the added plug is in the back there. You have to remember that that's a positive wire, a hot wire. You don't want it dangling around. You don't want it to get rubbed up against any metal. You want it to be secure and safe. Okay, so it doesn't short out on you. So now let's head to the back and let's see um, how we finish up. Okay, in my case, my hook road rear bumper came with two LED lights right here that I want to hook up. So how am I going to get the wire from here to the front of the quarter panel where we want to connect it to the final connection? We're going to feed it behind this plastic trim piece. This plastic trim piece has one, two, three, four push pins and has two 10 millimeter screws that hold it in place. So on these push pins, you want to use a filter. You want to gently... You want to gently back up the plastic screw. Then you're going to take your push pin tool. You're going to place it in there and you're going to pop it out. And that's what the push pin looks like. Okay. So let's take those four out and let's take these two 10 millimeter off. Okay. Once we have our four push pins out and our two 10 millimeter, we're just going to grab this right here and we're just going to feed it out nice and gently. 
beat it out of the quarter and then curl it right out and we're going to remove it and i gotta tell you ford did everything right except for one thing and that one thing is they didn't make an easy access hole from here to inside the vehicle there's no real way of getting in there there are some holes but it has either plugs or screws that go in them and we don't want to share that with a plug or a screw so let me bring you in and show you how i got it in there it was the only way i could find feasible to get it in there if anybody knows of a better way please let me know so i fed the wire up from the light we're going to follow it up right up here tucking it in and then right up here let me bring you in close Right in here, you'll see that there's a opening. And on this side, there happens to be a little notch right there. And that notch will keep the wire protected. We're gonna feed the wire. We're gonna feed the wire down this pathway. And then we're gonna follow the existing harness, wire tire to the existing harness, and then feed her in to follow the harness all the way to the Ford accessory plug. This wire should be well protected and we should have no problems. All right. As far as the ground goes, the whole vehicle is grounded. I'm going to find myself an appropriate bolt somewhere underneath or somewhere here. And I'll ground the wire to that. So now let's just put all this back the way it was. And we'll test it out. Okay, I found a nice body bolt at the bottom of the taillight. And um, I used a spade connector and I connected my ground right there looped it up and down and now that ground is perfect and well protected and we're going to put the plastic panel back in with the uh, four clips and the two 10 millimeters and we're all done you did it congratulations well that's it that's how we get power back here i hooked up my two lights and my hook road bumper which i really like and um but you can use that technique to hook up any kind of lights anywhere you want in the back here, okay? So I hope this video helped some of you guys, made it easier, a little bit less confusing. And um, if you like this video, I tell you what, do me a favor. Subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and uh, you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.